Whether you're building big or small, I've got some tips for you from this tiny house build. Our company is building two tiny houses in this community first village here in Austin, Texas. And I wanna to talk to you today about a few lessons we've learned from this tiny house that might translate back to your house. But hey, if you want more information about community first, make sure you check out my other video. So let's get right into it. Number one, the first thing you'll notice on this tiny house is we've got a great wide roof with good overhangs, and we're also using a metal roofing product. Metal is a great choice for your roof. It's gonna reflect the sun's rays. It's gonna last quite a bit longer than an asphalt shingle roof. And in this case, it's relatively affordable and easy to install because this is not a concealed fastener. This is an exposed fastener roof. You'll also notice on this roof, we've got some exterior rigid foam on the rooftop, which really helps our house with expansion and contraction because we're not letting the structure get hot to begin with. This is really important if you're in the Southern US. Hey, the next thing I wanna talk about is the exposed wood on this house. You'll notice as you look around here, we've got mostly cedar on the outside of this house. All the porch columns are cedar, all the exterior trim is cedar. Cedar's a great choice because it's a naturally rot resistant and bug resistant product. If you put pine on the outside, it's just a matter of time before that's gonna rot or fade away. Hey, the next thing you wanna look at is when we've installed those posts, we've put those on a post base. The architects did a nice job of specifying a really pretty Simpson post base. And what this does is this spaces with an air gap between the wood post hitting the concrete foundation in this case. So now when those posts get wet, they're gonna have a chance to dry. They're not gonna have that water sealed up in there. Next, I wanna point out the weather resistant barrier in this house. DuPont uh, and their Tyvek brand is what we're using on this house. And in fact, they've actually donated all the materials for this charity project. This is a really good weatherization system. And you can see on this house, we've installed it with best practice methods. We're using their terrific sill pan material called Flex Wrap to make a custom sill pan before that window is installed. And then after that window gets set in place, we're using their flashing on three sides. You'll notice we're not using flashing on the bottom, but on the two sides and then finally the head, and then we're flapping the Tyvek back over there. Their flashing products are top notch, especially because they're butyl based and not asphaltic. The next thing I wanna talk about on this house is the metal siding and the exterior detailing. You'll notice that this metal siding on the outside of the house is set on a rain screen gap. That's an air gap behind the metal so that any water that gets past our siding is gonna fall harmlessly to the ground. It's also gonna let air flow back there so that if any water does get behind there, it's gonna be able to easily dry. A rain screen is a great detail for any size house you might be building. Lastly, I wanna thank the team at Page Sutherland Page Architects. They had several talented young designers who did a great job on the architecture for this tiny house, and they did all that work pro bono. This project's been a lot of fun. Hey, for more information on Community First and the tiny houses here, check the link below. There's also a spot there you can donate towards the great work that's happening here to end homelessness. If you want more information on my company, check out mattreisinger.com, which is my blog. Otherwise, follow me on Twitter or Instagram. We'll see you next time.